Now we're going to talk about loans. And these loans that we can talk about can be in regards to cars, homes, or anything that you're going to make a regular payment on when the bank started off loaning you a big, a big lump sum of money. Now, as you look at this formula, it should look very, very familiar. It should look identical to your payout annuity formula. It's exactly the same thing. The only difference is the money is going in the opposite direction. Instead of the bank holding your money and giving you interest as you take money out from the bank, it's going the other direction. That you're holding the bank's money. The bank starts off giving you a whole bunch of money, and you are slowly paying it back to the bank, but they're charging you interest instead of giving you interest. So it's literally the exact same thing as long as we identify that the D in this case is the payment amount and the P sub zero is the loan amount. And as long as we identify that, it's literally the exact same formula. So let's look at this first problem. You want to buy a car that's 25 grand. The company is offering a 3% interest rate, it's pretty good, for 36 months or three years. What will your monthly payments be for this car? Well, our goal is to solve for the monthly payments, so we can do similar to what we had done with annuities. Say, let's solve this by multiplying both sides of the equation by r over k over 1 minus 1 plus r over k to the negative nk. And again, just like before, the idea here is that here on the right side, the rks would divide out. It would be on the left side with the p sub zero. All that would be left on the left, or the right side rather, is the d. And so when we multiply on the left side, we're going to get the p sub zero times the r over k. And on the bottom, we're going to have this 1 minus 1 plus r over k to the negative nk. And now we're just going to plug the numbers in. We're going to say the initial amount is $25,000. The interest rate is 3%. The K, or the number of computations, we're looking at the monthly payment. So this is going to be 12. All over 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.03 over 12. To the negative, we're doing three years, so remember that the capital N is always in years, times the 12. And now we already have practice typing this kind of formula in because we did the same thing with payout annuities. So we're just going to start off with a fraction, 25,000 times 0 0.03 over 12, go down to the bottom for our 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.03, fraction 12, get out of the bottom, get an exponent with negative 3 times 12. On first glance, this might seem like an extremely large car payment for a $25,000 car. Until you go back and look at the fact that this was only a three-year car payment. So if you're used to looking at car payments, you're used to probably looking at five-year car payments, sometimes five and a half or six years. They even make seven-year car payments. And that's how they get your payment down more, but you're paying a lot more in interest then. Because that's what we could also look at then, is once we have this value, we could look at how much money are we paying in interest. We could calculate that by coming back to our calculator and saying, how much did I pay? If I paid $727.03 every month for three years, well, let's multiply this by 12 to find out how much per year, and times that by 3, 
And it looks like I paid a total of $26,000. And so if I want to know how much interest I paid, I actually paid $1,173 of interest, which is reasonable because this was a really low interest rate at 3% and the fact that we only financed over three years. Try to do that same calculation when you start to look at four or 5% interest rates and you finance over five or six years. As you're going through the homework, even if it's not asked of you, try to do that. Try to play around with looking at how much interest am I paying on this problem and really consider that. It's interesting to start looking at this from a good finance uh, finance person standpoint, say, I want to be a good consumer here and really think about where my money is going. So now let's look at using the loans formula a little more directly. So the Small Business Administration officers business loans at 4.8% interest compounded monthly for 10 years. If the owner of a restaurant can afford monthly payments of $850, what's the maximum amount that he can borrow with this type of loan. So in this case, the amount that he can afford to pay, that's the D value. So in this case, we're kind of plugging in directly that we can say 850 times one minus one plus. Now the interest rate in this case was the 0 0.048, so 4.8%. And this was monthly, so K is 12. And he was going to do this over 10, let me make sure because I kind of scribble over it, yeah, 10 years. So we were looking at 10 years, again monthly, so K is still 12. And then over 0 0.048 over 12. And once we have all those numbers, it's just a matter of plugging into the formula. Start off with the fraction bar. Hopefully you're getting good practice with this by now. Because that's really the key to a lot of this, uh, this module here is just typing stuff into the calculator correctly. If you can master that and understand which formula to use in each situation, you will be golden. So we're typing all this in. We're done with the exponent. Oops, I forgot an end parenthesis here in my handwritten work that I should probably put in here. Now we arrow down to the bottom to type our 0 0.048. Turn that into a fraction that's over 12. And we have a loan amount of $80,000 and then 882.5. Now, one of the things that I would personally do to kind of make sure this makes sense is I would look at how much money this person is paying back. And I would say, hey, if I put $850 per month, well, times in by 12 would get me how much per year. Times in by 10 would say, all right, so I'm paying back $102,000. I'm borrowing 80000 So it's reasonable, but it also shows you that, man, I'm paying like almost $20,000 of interest. That's a lot. So we've got this $102,000 that we're paying back. $80,000 is what we're getting. Hmm. Let's look at one more of these loan problems. Let's look at a mortgage one. So suppose that you know that you can afford $1,050 a month towards a mortgage. You found a 30-year loan at 6%. 6 percent. 6 percent is kind of a big interest rate there. We want to figure out, though, how big of a loan could I actually afford if that's, if that's the monthly amount. This is important when you're house hunting because you want to be able to say, all right, what's my price range? When you're looking at houses, it... Every little bit you go up, the houses really do get nicer. Trust me, I've gone house hunting a few times. I'm on my second house, and it's amazing. If you can afford an extra twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000, the houses get nicer, the neighborhoods get better. So you really want to know what you can afford. So this is going to be a directly plug-and-chug type of problem at first, that we're going to say, well, the ten fifty is my D amount. 
So let's plug that into the 1050. We got the 1 minus 1 plus. The interest rate is 6%. That's going to hurt us. And we are looking at making monthly payments for 30 years. Interest rate again was 6%. And it was monthly. So if we get the trusty calculator out and let the moment of truth come as we type this out, we're crossing our fingers for a really nice house. It's so nerve-wracking to type this and hope that we can get the house of our dreams. We're going to the exponent for our negative 30 times 12. I mean, out of the exponent to end the parenthesis, we're almost at the end of the crazy long formula as we type in the 12 and hit enter. We can afford a house that costs $175,131.50. That's what we can afford. So what we're going to look at now is we want to look at how much total money are we paying our loan company, our bank here. So we were giving them 1050 a month. So we times that by 12 to find out how much per year and times that by 30 to find out over the life of the loan how much money we gave the bank. If we bought a $175,000 house, we gave the bank $378,000. To find out how much interest we paid, we're going to subtract off from the amount that we paid the, the company, we're going to subtract off the cost of the house. And we're going to realize that we paid in interest alone $202,868.80. We paid more in interest than we did for the principal amount of the house. That's outrageous. That interest rate makes a huge huge difference. Let's come back up here. Let's try to reuse this formula. Let's come back to it. We'll do the copy paste trick and let's see what would have happened if we could have got that down to 3%. If we could have cut that interest rate in half. So we'll change it in the bottom. We'll come back and change it in the top too. So if we can change that to a 3% interest rate, check out that difference. So that should really show us the big difference here in that interest rate. So we can see that when the, uh, when the loan was 6%, we paid $202,000 of interest. Whereas we only paid $128,000, $129,000 at 3%. That's a difference of $74,000. We're able to afford a much, much nicer house. And if you look, that's a close to a $75,000 nicer house that we can afford just because of that interest rate. So hopefully this goes to show that when you're shopping for a home, you really want to try to get the lowest interest rate possible. It can make a huge difference in how much you're paying and therefore how much you can afford. So definitely shop around on your interest rates. Don't just take the first offer that you get.